Megan here from Growing Up Herbal. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome. I am so glad to have you here. I hope you enjoy today's video. If you've been watching for a while, then thank you guys very much for taking the time to come back. In today's video, I am going to share 10 of my must-have herbal preparations for the fall home apothecary. So it's mid-September and that means that it's time to start stocking the home apothecary for the types of preparations that you're gonna need for whatever ailments or conditions you may find yourself experiencing through the fall season and probably into winter as well. So I've made a quick little list here of 10 things that I want to have on hand for my fall apothecary. So things that um, my four boys, my husband and I would use often in the fall um, for little things that we personally tend to deal with. Now, every herbalist's home apothecary is going to look very different and I just wanna share what I need for um, my family and the things that we deal with, whatever you decide to put in your fall home apothecary is gonna look different um, based on where you live, the herbs you have available, the types of conditions that you typically um, deal with or ailments that you you know, get during the fall or the winter season. Um, so I don't want you to feel like your apothecary should look like mine or these herbal preparations should be in yours unless it, it seems fitting to you, right? Okay. So I'm going to go through these 10 things and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we use them for. I'm not going to give you a bunch of details about um, the herbs or how to make the preparations or the recipes or anything like that. If you um, come back in later weeks, I'm going to be posting some videos that show how to make different preparations that you see here. Um, I'll be telling you about the benefits of the herbs, how to make the recipes, how to use them, things like that. So definitely check back in later weeks so you can learn how to make some of this stuff. So the first thing that is on my list, I actually don't have because I used it up. <laughs> I used it up um, last year and I haven't made any for this year yet, but I'm going to be making some. So this is an ointment, which is kind of like a salve. It's called Goot. Um, and it is it stands for garlic olive oil treatment. So basically all it is, is you take crushed garlic, you infuse it in olive oil, and I like to add some tea tree essential oil to it, and you mix that with a little bit of beeswax, and you make a nice soft salve. Now what I use Goot for is anytime any of us come down with a cough. I rub that on our chest, I rub it on the bottoms of our feet, and what that does is garlic is an antimicrobial herb, and it's really great for preventing coughs from becoming chest infections. Okay, so now I'm gonna share another thing that I use for that exact same reason, and this is garlic honey. I have some of that here. Um, this it has been sitting for a while and the garlic is infusing into the honey. Um, you can make this fresh if you want and use it or you can let it sit out. It may ferment a little bit. You can keep it in your refrigerator if you don't want to ferment. Um, but this I also use whenever my kids or I have coughs and I don't want it to become an infection and be worse. Um, so I will take this internally um, by the spoonful several times a day. I use it in conjunction with the goot. So anytime we get some sort of little viral infection and we're coughing and I'm worried about it turning into something worse than it already is, I use the garlic honey and I use the goot. Now garlic honey can also be used for other things. So it's a really great addition to the apothecary. I just like to have these two preparations on hand for fall because in the fall, viral illnesses are going around and coughs tend to be a symptom of a lot of respiratory viral illnesses. So I have this made up. I'm gonna make some goot up and make sure that I keep that in my apothecary. That's the only thing I don't have, that's on my list that I don't have here today. So there is the garlic honey. Okay, so the next preparation that I like to have on hand in my fall apothecary is vapor rub. Now you can make your own vapor rub, um, but you can also buy it. This is from a company called Maddie's All Natural Products, and this is a vapor rub for adults, and this is one for, it says for babies, but you can use it on children under like six, 
six to ten six um, because the adult one has eucalyptus and peppermint essential oil and I believe peppermint is not recommended on children under six I think it's six you may want to check that age um, but this one is for young children or babies and it has eucalyptus lavender and chamomile it's menthol free Mm, it smells so good and it I use this stuff whenever the kids have a cough you can rub this on their chest or on the bottoms of their feet if they have caught a cold and their sinuses are stopped up and they can't breathe very well you can rub a little bit on their upper lip um, to help kind of make them feel like the air is going through their um, nasal passages better I actually read something online one time and it said something about um, the menthol containing oils don't actually open the nasal passages they don't dilate the nasal passages when you're all congested and you're really like inflamed in there but they do help you feel like you're breathing better and it really does make you feel better I mean anytime I'm congested I love a little bit of vapor rub on the bottom of my feet and right here on my nose or right under my nose it just helps me feel like I can breathe better and that makes you sleep better so this is something that I definitely keep in my fall apothecary because it, it never fails. Somebody's going to get a cold or a cough and not be able to breathe very well, and we need something like that on hand. Okay, um, so the next thing that I have on hand is elderberry syrup. Um, believe it or not, this is syrup I made last year. I will probably make a fresh batch, but this one is still good. The way that I make my syrups is it's one part of whatever the herb is it's a decoction one part infused honey and one part herbal tincture so this is elderberry syrup so I've got um, a mixture of herbs that I use in my elderberry syrups and I made a decoction with those herbs and then I use elderberry honey and elderberry tincture and the reason I do all three of those things is because I want to get the water and the alcohol soluble properties out of my herbs because I feel like it makes a stronger more effective preparation now that's just a personal preference that's what I like to do um, I also adding the alcohol tincture helps to preserve this a little bit and helps it to last longer again I said this is from last year if I just made a typical traditional elderberry syrup with no alcohol in it it would maybe last me three weeks but because I put alcohol in this it lasts for a good long while and this has been in my refrigerator smells good tastes good we can still use it we will probably start using this up but I'm gonna go ahead and make a fresh another fresh batch for this year now elderberry syrup is basically used for immune support it has some antiviral properties cold and flu season is coming up and this is gonna be a really great thing to have on hand um, I have a recipe on my blog on how to make traditional elderberry syrup but I will probably do a video showing you how I make these new syrups um, so speaking of syrups I also keep on hand um, these two cough syrups one is for the type of cough that is a very dry cough. There's no mucus present, but you just cannot stop coughing. All right, so I call this one settle down cough syrup because it kind of calms that spastic dry coughing down. And then I have another one with different herbs in it that is for those types of coughs that are really mucusy and your chest feels really full and you just feel like you have to keep coughing the stuff up maybe it won't come up and it's stuck in your chest but you know there's a lot of mucus in there because maybe you can hear it or you can't take a deep breath and it just feels really stuck this one i call loosen up cough syrup now i got the recipes for these syrups and i actually got the method on how to make my syrups with the three equal parts decoction infused honey and tincture from herbalist Juliet Blankenspor um, on her website, which is um, Chestnut School of Herbal Medicine. She runs a, an herbal school down in Asheville, North Carolina. She is an amazing herbalist and she has so many good um, things and recipes and information on her website. Um, Chestnut School has a couple of online herbal courses. One is a medicine making course and then one is an herbal immersion program. I actually have an herbalist friend who went through their immersion program and she just loved it. She's a really great herbalist. Um, their medicine making program has a free lesson. If you go to their blog, there's a free lesson on making syrups. And these recipes for these cough syrups, the loosen up and the settle down, um, 
are on that free lesson and she tells you how to make these syrups this way. So I would highly recommend that if you're interested. I use these anytime we have a cough, depending on which kind of cough we have and she kind of goes into how to determine which kind of cough you have. But these are two things that I keep in my apothecary for the fall because respiratory illnesses, you're gonna have coughs. Speaking of coughs, if you have a cough, chances are you're gonna have a sore throat. So I keep these Thayer's Slippery Elm lozenges on hand for sore throats for my kids and I. You can make your own sore throat lozenges. You can make cough, uh, little cough drops, herbal cough drops. You can make um, herbal pastilles that are like, it's kind of like a little bit of an herbal dough and you can just suck on that and that gets in your throat. You can do all kinds of things for sore throats, but um, I was in Asheville with my husband last year and whatever the reason, I don't know if it was just the air or the temperature, but I had a sore throat and obviously I was out of town. I didn't have any of my regular herbs on hand, so I stopped at Mia Toll's, um, her herbal shop, which is called the Herbary in Asheville, and I bought these Slippery Elm lozenges. You can probably get these on Amazon too or in any health food store, but I wanted to stop by her shop and get some stuff, and I bought these also. So I do keep these in my apothecary for fall because, you know, whether it's a change in the temperature and you get a sore throat or you've been coughing too much and you have a sore throat or whatever, it's nice to have some of these Slippery Elm lozenges on hand because they really do make your throat feel better. Um, Okay, let's see, what else do I have on hand? Okay, so earache oil. This is something I am gonna show you guys how to make. So it seems like in the transition from warm weather to cold weather, um, whether you're outside enjoying hiking in nature and the leaves changing colors, or um, you know, it's like you have a, some sort of like congestion or sinus issue going on and there's lots of drainage, it seems like you get earaches um, more frequently at this time of the year. Um, so it could be the wind bothering your ears, uh, it could be your sinuses draining and giving you an earache, I don't know. But if we don't have this earache oil on hand, then it can make for some miserable kids. So I tend to always make some earache oil. Um, I make it with mullein flowers and fresh garlic. If I don't have mullein flowers on hand, I use chamomile flowers and garlic. You can even throw in a little bit of calendula because calendula is a great herb for things like that. Um, so I definitely keep this on hand in case we need it. I only keep a little bottle because it's it a little bit goes a long way, so you don't need to make a big old batch. Um, and it never fails that somebody needs that, and it's really nice to have it on hand and not have to have a miserable kid while you're trying to make this oil. Um, okay, what else do I have on my list? I have some warming salve. So I don't know if you guys can see this. It's kind of like an orange-yellow color. This is a recipe... Um, I can't remember where I originally found this recipe, but this is the best salve or the best ointment for sore muscles. Now, every fall, my husband goes out and he cuts um, or he cleans up like uh, fallen trees and we cut them to burn uh, the wood in our wood stove because I love a wood stove in the colder months of the year. But it makes him sore because he's outside and he's working hard and his muscles get sore and he loves putting this this uh, warming salve on his muscles. If you pull a muscle, this is great to have any time of the year actually, but I feel like in the fall it, um, it's definitely needed. But if you pull a muscle, it's really nice to just kind of massage this into that sore muscle spot. Now, this has arnica, ginger, and cayenne in it. You can even put a little bit of turmeric in it to give it a little bit of this orange color, but that can stain your clothes. But I just used Arnica, Ginger, and Cayenne in here, and this helps to warm up and bring blood flow to the surface of the skin. Um, I love having this on hand during the winter months. I actually also keep a cooling muscle rub oil um, that has like menthol crystals dissolved into it and some wintergreen essential oil and that's really great for adults it's not a good fit for kids because um, those things are a little strong for them but it's a really great fit for adults if you want to have a little bit of icy hot action going on and i will this is actually getting a little old it um, should smell really garlicky um and kind of spicy and mine is starting to smell a little bit like rancid oil so i've had this thing for a while you can tell from the label it's well used and kind of 
looking bad. So I need to make some fresh warming sap and I'm also gonna make a fresh batch of that cooling oil. So check back later and you'll see that. So the last thing that I keep on hand, and this is more for me than anybody else, is some fresh goldenrod tincture. So the goldenrod is in bloom right now um, here in East Tennessee. We're mid-September and it is just beautiful little spurts of gold when you drive down the road or like if I walk around my property, I can see it here and there. Um, so this is a perfect herb to harvest right now and make fresh tinctures. And I use goldenrod tincture in the fall um, for allergies. Now, I don't have a lot of allergies that bother me all that much, but sometimes in the fall, depending on what pollen is blowing through or I tend to be cleaning my house. I don't know what it is about seasonal transitions. Makes me wanna like do some deep cleaning. I'm, it's just a seasonal thing, so I'm gonna go with it. But it stirs up dust. I am switching my kids' clothes out from like spring and summer clothes to their fall and winter clothes. And so I'm up in the attic or I'm over in the shop and there's lots of dust going everywhere. And it never fails that I feel all of this sinus pressure a little bit later in the day after I've done stuff like that. Like if we've gone on a nature walk, we've gone on a hike, or um, every once in a while, you know, like the pollen bothers me. But this goldenrod tincture is really great for allergies. So during this transition from warm weather to cool weather, and when I know I'm going to be working on the kids' clothes, I'm going to be up in the attic and there's all this dust going around, or if I'm going to be cleaning a lot, I take small, regular doses of this golden rod tincture, and I always have this on hand during the fall for that specific reason. Okay, so I actually just realized that I lied to you. I only shared nine things in my fall home apothecary because I forgot to mention one item that I also did not have on hand for my fall apothecary, which is fire cider. If anybody has heard of fire cider, then you know that it is an immune supportive drink that is filled with, it's a mixture of honey and apple cider vinegar and it has a lot of spicy um, vegetables and herbs infused into it. And it really helps to increase circulation in the body and stimulate and support the immune system when viral illnesses are going around. So it's a really great addition to the fall home apothecary. Now, it's one of those things that you have to make fresh each year and I do not have any on hand, so I will be making that and adding that to my fall home pop carry. I wanted to jump back in here really quickly and tell you I'm so sorry because I forgot to share that with you. And that's one of the 10 things that I feel like is a must have in the fall home apothecary. So I will be showing you in a video how I make that as well. Fingers crossed. Hopefully I get to that one in video format. If not, then just know it will be included in my home pop carry and I will have some other videos for you guys. So those are the 10 must haves for my home apothecary during the fall. Um, I do add things during the winter, the spring and the summer, just depending upon the kinds of elements or conditions, like I said, that my family tends to have during those seasons. Um, but these are the things that I like to have on hand during the fall. Now, my apothecary is filled with um, herbal tinctures and lots of other things that we'll use if we need them, but I do feel like these are the things that we are going to use more frequently than those other things. So I wanted to share that with you today in case that's helpful, in case you are wanting to start using some herbs or you wanna know like what kinds of things are people prepping for um, for the upcoming months, this is what I am keeping on hand, this is what I'm prepping for. Um, I hope that's helpful to you and it helps give you kind of like an idea of some things that maybe you wanna keep on hand. Um, again, uh, come back later and check for later videos because I'm gonna be showing you how to make some of this stuff, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel or if you left me a comment because I love talking with you guys in the comments and getting to know you guys better. Um, I will leave some links in the description box below of some of the recipes that I have for these things on my blog or on other blogs where I found these recipes. If I won't be sharing a video on how to make it itself later on, I'll be sure to leave the link below so that you can and find the recipes in case you too want to stock these things in your fall home apothecary. Okay, so thank you guys again for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you later. Bye.